Hi, I'm Chef Beth and this is Nutrition in the Kitchen. We've been talking about developing a three-part feeding framework as a go-to foundation for healthy and happy eating. On our previous episode, we explained the first part, which is feeding jobs. Today, we're going to discuss part two, which is creating a smart schedule. Moms of very young babies have a feeding schedule, but as children get older, it often fades away. A basic schedule for meals and snacks actually provides reliable and consistent timing, both for parents and children. The schedule should have time zones for three meals and optional times for snacks. The time zone might be an hour in length. For example, lunch could start anywhere between 11 and 12 o'clock. This allows you to be really flexible based on your daily schedule. So an example for breakfast might be the zone from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., a lunch zone from 12 to 1, and the dinner zone from 5 to 6, with perhaps one or two snacks in between. The key is to serve food during the scheduled times instead of letting the child graze on demand. Let me explain how the schedule works by discussing three common problems that families face. First, very often a toddler or young child will be sitting at the table for their meal, but then five minutes later they say they're done, they jump down and start playing. Then 20 to 30 minutes later, they come back complaining that they're hungry. This is a very frustrating situation for parents. The smart schedule enables you to tell your child that the meal is done, but that snack time is coming up in an hour or two, whatever time you've decided for your snack zone. If you know they're hungry, serve the snack at the start of that zone. But if they're full or they're really busy, then serve snack at the end of the time zone. In the second common problem situation, the child may jump down from the table and say they're done again after five or 10 minutes, but the parent is worrying that the child did not eat enough. So then the parent chases the kid all around with a spoon, trying to negotiate with them to eat more, just a few more bites. They try all, distraction techniques and turn the TV on and try to sneak a bite here and there. But the parent is really extending the meal time and this feeding dynamic is not successful and creates a lot of complications. With a consistent schedule in place, even if the child didn't eat much at the meal, the parent knows that snack time is coming soon, so there's no need to beg the child to eat more. Now, before you implement this, you do need to explain to the child that once they get down from the table, the meal will be over and then they'll have to wait it out until the next meal time or snack time. The third and last problem is kids who really want to graze all day long. Parents often worry because the child is filling up on snacks, but they do not eat well at the meal. Children who graze all day often do not eat as well because they're filling up on what I call filler foods. These are things like crackers and granola bars and string cheese and things like that. A consistent schedule is the answer to help a grazer eat better. See you next time for part three of our feeding framework. I'm Chef Beth and this is Nutrition in the Kitchen.